Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is. Don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. Captain America Civil War movie thoughts. I was wondering if they if they would be able to kind of like I say in the review, you know, if they could make I mean if if what it boils down to is here's a bunch of you know costume characters who don't want to work for the government and here's a bunch who are willing to you know and they fight you know that's what they did in the comics and you know there were definite problems from that they they had to really you know yeah i i i'm not the first to say but you know in order to make these two heroes fight other heroes you know they turn them both into villains and yeah you know and, and in general i i wasn't sure if this would be yeah you know if to to quote or paraphrase you know is is steve fighting for his right to illegally punch people and ultimately the you know it is because of what zemo does i want to say zemo not nemo the helmet i'm pretty sure his his yes dark helmet basically manipulates into you know he and he makes it clear he you know he wants them to know he he makes sure that the evidence is found you know the the actual you know the the doctor that he killed to go in place of and the you know the the face mask thing that he you know is it just is it going to be every russo brothers movie is is there going to be like modern spy you know infiltration kind of political in you know the infinity gauntlet storyline that's i almost kind of want to see that you know like the the yeah that would that would that would be interesting but yeah i am you know i i i'm certain that they can but i am curious to see just how the Russos will handle, you know, as alien a being as Thanos when we get there. But anyway, yeah, you know, at the end of the day, it really is, he manipulates them so that ultimately it is, it is that Tony has agreed to this law that means that they can't investigate what was going on with Bucky. You know, they 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 have to Yeah. Not not literally, but I think you take my meaning. The and and on the other hand, you know, Steve is determined to yeah, to protect Bucky and find out what did happen, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of this thing of, it's almost like, they, there, there is this PTSD ridden individual and Steve is trying to, trying to keep him free of like government interference so that the two of them can together help him heal help him deal with the past 
and Tony has agreed to a law which he didn't really, he didn't know would, you know, mean that this PTSD ridden individual would be treated as the criminal that he used to be, you know, so it's because Tony isn't really looking to treat him like that. It's 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 too bad that that it has to be that manipulation in order to fit it in there. And you know, I can I can understand if someone goes into it thinking, you know, this you know, almost saying like that that this was not what I thought the the conflict would really be. And yeah, that I, I do think that that's it's unfortunate, but you know, nostalgia chick said that you know any change could only be an improvement, and yeah, it is a vast improvement. You know, again, having like I said in the review, I have just reread the Civil War comics, and yeah, they really just I mean, they. <laughs> They did what they felt they had to in order to get these two, you know, major draws of readers to fight. And, yeah, they, they did end up fighting. And I do think that it's, you know, ultimately, in, in this, you know, when... You know, at, at the end of the day, at least to an extent, it is about, you know, the, that Tony wants revenge for his parents. And, you know, when, and, and you know, Black Panther realizes that they've all been manipulated and, you know, and it it almost is kind of like... You know, yeah. If if he hadn't realized that he had been that that it wasn't Bucky who killed his father, then you know he'd be right there next to Iron Man. But yeah, as it is, he. But the yeah, you know, I I did think you know that was that was. It was as as far as kind of you know whenever you have when 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 you have to de-age an actor it's it's never they they did okay you know, I mean, I've I've seen movies from, you know, yeah, they they said it was ninety one. I've seen movies from around that time with Robert Downey Jr. and that that is what he looked like. So, you know, but yeah, the yeah the the. You know, ultimately, the the yeah, they're they're at the end. the The conflict is basically the all three of them now know that Bucky, as the Winter Soldier, killed Tony's parents, and Steve maintains that Bucky isn't responsible for that because he was, you know, brainwashed and, you know, yeah, Tony maintains that he should be, you know, that he should get to avenge them. When, when he, when he kicked 
Bucky in the face with the iron boot, knowing that Bucky wouldn't be able to, like, you know, block it or get out of the way. Man, Tony can be an ass sometimes. Like the, you know, like Captain America 2, you know, this really changes the MCU and, you know, the Accords are in effect after this, which, you know, yeah, I, it's, it's a, it, it again completely changes the dynamics and I, yeah, I'm, I'm really glad that they do keep you know, daring to do this because it would get so flat and boring if it just kept being the same. You know, it, when the MCU started, we didn't know that they were going to change things up. It just, it, you know, at first it just looked like, okay, so we're being introduced to, you know, we get a bunch of origin stories and then they all come together. It's super cool. It's amazing that they made separate movies and then brought them all together rather than, you know, pushing out a movie where all of them are there and then, you know, they're not... Yeah, it just, it, it doesn't tend to work out as well. And then, you know, it's kind of, okay, what now? And it would have been easy for them to not change anything, to just let everything be. But yeah, they actually, you know, every so often really, really change the way things work. And yeah. Now, you know, given that we do have a, you know, the MCU has a huge cast of costume characters. I've been saying for a while that it could do with at least a little bit of thinning out, so I wondered if any of them would die or at least quit, and, you know, obviously not Iron Man. They, you know, Marvel would be killing the Golden Goose, but, you know, maybe War Machine, and, you know, in this, I mean, ultimately he can... You know, he might not be back in a suit, like, right away, but, yeah, you know, in, in time. I could imagine that by the time of the Infinity Wars, the, you know, Infinity Go yeah, the, you know, that by then, you know, it will be, yeah, but, you know, in... In his first two movies, Steve was completely ready to let himself die in a crashing, flying death machine. And, you know, I was wondering if that would happen again, and this time it would actually stick. But, yeah. Instead, it's, you know, it might be, you know, will they be able to trust each other the next time? They, you know, I mean, th when Thanos comes around... Yeah, we're, you know, they're going to need every hand they've got. So, you know, yeah, I can I can imagine that that will be, you know, I mean, yeah, they're not exactly going to just ignore this. So when that happens, yeah, they will have to work together and then, you know, then we'll see will will Steve and his, you know, are, are they referred to as the Secret Avengers? In the it's been too long since I looked at those exact details, but yeah, you know the the yeah. Let's let's go with that. Whether the Secret Avengers will go legit, or you know, if Tony will have to work with them without the UN knowing if if he will quit or yeah and you know in the comics 
Steve and Sharon are killed by crossbones, although then turns out to have been Sharon, you know, seemingly killing Steve, you know, and, you know, if it happened here, it would probably also have been pointless and unnecessary. Excuse me. And then, you know, Falcon and Winter Soldier could, you know, take over as Captain America. And, you know, rereading the Civil War, I was, you know, I was surprised to realize how much of it they had already put in Captain America 2 and Age of Ultron. And, you know, in the, in the comics, the, the registration leads to, you know, Tony and pro-registration side wins with Steve surrendering because he realizes, oh, hey, collateral damage. I forgot about that. And then they actually form 50 hero teams, you know, a team per state. And, yeah, you know, in, in this, you know, I, I figure it's going to be the Avengers for the whole world, you know. And that's also probably a, a good idea. And it's also the the UN having some control over the Avengers is very different from Shield having, you know, yeah, being being in charge of them. You know, the the UN it's all of these separate countries and their interests, and there's no way that they've all been infiltrated by Hydra and it's yeah it's just it's it's gonna be interesting to see how they you know yeah and you know even in the trailers we saw what I didn't want to talk about in the main video we see Bucky actually basically try to kill Tony, you know, with the, you know, he didn't, when he fired, he didn't necessarily know that Tony was going to be able to stop the bullet with the the one, you know, hand of, of Iron Man, you know, so, yeah, and that was a really, I mean, that's, that's part of the, the thing with having Bucky as a character is, yeah, the programming still in there. You know, they didn't. I mean, he woke up at the end of Captain America two, but he wasn't. Yeah, you know, I mean, it is, this is basically Jason Bourne running around, and yeah, they reactivated the the programming, and he turned back into the merciless killing machine, and yeah, that's really compelling for a character, you know, the rest of the movie he's actually having to deal with, he almost killed people again, you know, the after having stopped that whole, th yeah, so, and the, you know, that's also part of why he kind of kept you know, he didn't want to ex he didn't want to end up hurting anyone else. And I I think the film did a good job of us not really knowing if it was him. And at first, I thought that he had been like I don't know, hi hired, I guess. That that some kind of you know, that that I didn't quite know what to think. I certainly hadn't, you know, I hadn't figured out that it would turn out to be Helmet who, you know, had, had, you know, used a mask and such to, you know, but, but when you find out later that that's what happened, you completely see how that, you know, worked as, yeah, it, it was just, he was, 
yeah it it and that's 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 why it works so well you know we just the moment that you realize yeah it's just like oh no did he actually do it and to the world it looks like he actually did it going off last minute notes I have to start with the post credits scene. I love that they actually gave it to Spidey, that 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 that, that is his post credit scene. And you know, he, he fiddles with it and it starts to like show something and he's like, you know, it, you know, he he hadn't realized that the, the suit had that, that the suit that Iron Man gave him. You know, and we see both the, the first the, the homemade and then the the you know, slightly updated, and it's also like, you know, okay, Iron Man gave him that suit, that I can believe, you know, how did, you know, Mopey McGuire and Andrew Garfield manage to, you know, make something that looks so sleek, but, yeah, anyway, it's actually, it's, it's the spider, it's, it's the spider signal from the, from the old comics, where he had it on, like, you know, his, his belt buckle, kind of, where he would have a belt buckle, and then it, and then it showed it up on the, to, so he could use it, like, like, to, to, you know, scare bad guys sometimes, like, ah, oh, here, I'm coming, and it's just, um, I haven't, I haven't seen that in so long. And it's it's so cool that they put because that's 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 classic Spider-Man right there, you know, really really old school that he had that that signal. Now the and the you know briefly the mid credits scene you know the Winter Soldier agreeing to go under like he says until you know as long as his programming is still there that they could you know mess I mean. All it took was saying the the right you know code words to him, and so yeah, and you know he lost the metal arm. That's all brutal. When when Tony Stark wants, yeah, it's yeah, and yeah, you know he's being. <coughs> excuse me, he's being you know frozen again and we you know and it's like oh black panther is doing that to to help you know like he said you know if i could help at least one that you know that's what i'm you know i will do and they're gonna come for you i'd like to see them try you know and see and it's you know deep in wakanda and you've got the the black panther statue and everything the I think it's it's interesting that like a helmet and really the film agrees with them is saying if if you get the government involved in your organization then you know yeah basically you can't you you might lose friends you know that's going to just the the you know bringing in this kind of, I mean it basic it it makes sense this kind of oversight you know the the really the a really big thing in the comics was the you know that they would have the that that the secret identities would no longer be completely secret you know in this it's more this and th that that is something i will say that you know the film here, I get more the sense that the UN might be a little too too cautious. You know, they wouldn't send the Avengers in in time, basically. They would wait for, you know, a a yeah, they would they would keep, you know, looking at the situation and it's from from a detached kind of and say well I'm, I'm not sure we should send them in yet and that kind of thing and that you know I could see how that would I mean that's not something that Steve can 
can live with. You know, he he is not going to just yeah. You know, when when it's he's he's going to do what he can to just yeah. The moment that he sees that this is this is now, then he'll go in. The you know, it was really cool there at the end how, you know, you see all of them in jail and then, you know, you see, you know, he took out all the guards off screen and then, you know, he he freed all of them from jail. And then Ross calls him, you know, there's there's been a breach in, oh, I'm sorry, I have to pull you on hold. No! I really hope that William Hurt is like, <laughs> you know, that he's very kind of that he can laugh at his character because it must be super frustrating to yeah be in this movie if he can't because he really yeah but that is right from the, that's that's really one of the relatively few things Tony says or does where it's like really okay this is funny this is like Tony Stark being really funny which is what we're so used to it's it's so it's such a subdued Tony in this one, but yeah, you know the thing. I you know, call me anytime because I would love to put you on hold. I really kind of I I know I say this every single time, but they keep making them better. The Stanley cameo is so good. You know the Tony Stank. Oh, I'm never gonna forget this one. And the, uh, you know, I I like, you know, when when we see in the trailers the the you know, he's my friend, so was I. Exchange was in such a different context. You know, him saying so was I, it almost felt like like uh, Tony was especially hurt like he was devastated by you know he just and here it almost feels like he's you know like like yeah you know Steve is saying I have to protect him he is my friend and and Tony goes in for the attack so was I you know like it's more aggressive I I really legit thought that for a second there that 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 Steve was trying to kill Tony but then we realized oh, okay okay it's it's the he's trying to get the you know to depower the suit and you know once he does that he he walks off and that little thing of you know you don't deserve that shield my father gave you that and you don't deserve it and Steve pauses and then he leaves it there. That was I mean this see this is how you do it. This everybody who says like ah oh, you know it's impossible to write for Superman or Captain America they're they're just too nice. This is how you do it. You just put them in a compelling situation where them being this really principled guy makes us go yes yes exactly. Yes, I you know instead of thinking that they're boring you know you just have to come up with situations where they're challenged but that they can still show that they are that principled you know the thing you know sometimes I wish I sometimes I wish I wasn't Tony no you don't no I don't I thought that the You know the the kind of tragic backstory of Helmet. I th I thought it worked. You know, it, I can I can see how some would say he's not that compelling overall. And you know, in a movie that has so many co costume characters who make really, you know, I can I can understand being frustrated. But I I liked the the you know. And and you know that thing you know Martin Freeman says ah, 
fail so utterly. Did I? You know, can can they trust each other again? I thought that and a uh, good, you know, and Black Panther is like he doesn't attack Helmet, even though he, you know, he realizes if there is a person I should kill for killing my father, it would be Helmet. He's right there. He doesn't do it, you know, and if if he, you know, and he could jump down and join in with the other, you know, if if you know he thought that, but no, instead, you know, he just. He sits there, and the moment that, you know, he even, he retracts the claws, and then you see Helmut's gun, and it's like, oh no, will he shoot? I mean, we, you know, we've seen that the, the suit is bulletproof. I really like the reveal on that, too, that, you know, he didn't even, like, try to duck. He just stands there staring down the helicopter, and it shoots, and, you know, just nothing badass. Badass. And just the... Yeah, then you have, you know, the, the, yeah, you know, he's, he's not wearing the mask, so, I mean, if helmet, you, I, who am I kidding, whenever everything's armored but the face or, like, the, the mouth or the, the eyes or something, that's, they, they always shoot the chest, so it shouldn't be a problem, but anyway, he's got, you know, and he's about to shoot himself, and then, you know, and, you know, it's the thing of, you know, was it the, the, the dead? And then he went, no, the living are not through with you yet. And the, yeah, just that, that thing of, you know, you know, oh, but you, you missed our sons, oh, you, okay, I guess, you know, try to make it home. The first time you think that that's a phone call, and then the, you know, there at the end you realize, oh, it's a message. He, he still had, because they died way back, it's been a year, they've been dead for a year, he still had that message, he's been listening to it, you know, to motivate himself, and just, and, and him retelling the, the story of, you know, yeah, and and that's also, I mean, I don't know if the, the Russos, I don't know who exactly came up with it, but that, you know, that is basically how you get around the, you know, they seem to save everyone in Sokovia, in the city, but what if you didn't live in the city? Then your part of the landmass probably wasn't raised, and the moment that it slammed down, yeah, you know, at least that's how I perceive it. I, I might have. There are a lot of details in this movie, and you know, I, I thought that the reveal on. I mean, it was really devastating when we actually see Bucky kill you know, the, the two parents, you know, and there's like a second there where you're not entirely sure, you know, and then he punches him in the face and then he puts him back in the car. So it's going to look like they crashed the car so hard that his head slammed against so hard that, and then he goes and he snaps the, the you know, the, the wife's neck. That's just, Wow, that was that was really dark, and and without going too dark, that yeah, they they handled that beautifully. And you know that's you know he said to bring down an empire. You know, if you if it's from outside, then it can rise up, but if an empire falls from the inside, it will never. You know that was a, a good, and you know. And if you especially want to take down an empire, you have to go around its legs and then pull it down. That was a really great, you know. Hey, anybody seen that ancient movie, you know, The Empire Strikes Back? Where did you find this guy? <laughs> you know, he might have, he might have a point. And... You know, the. 
the the thing about how he's not the only yeah briefly the that scene where he keeps going back to you know the we we keep we see it, it yeah it's it's about that exact mission over and over you know first we see him go for the car and then you know retrieve the things and then go back and then later we see what the things he retrieved were for and you know then at the end we realized that it was you know Tony's parents that and yeah you you have you know the this you know like like Buggy says I wasn't the only winter soldier and then we see the the team and how you know Bucky got out but they were still you know and when you just hear Helmut having said I'm taking down an empire it's like oh no what you know okay what what could he be taught is is he going to try and take down like America itself with you know group of winter soldiers and you know and like maybe it's difficult not to or maybe they just really think that that's cool to mine from there as well but the Russos both winter soldier you know stories now have had them you know go into universal soldier territory you know in the first one it's like it's memory clearance time you know in Captain America 2 in this it's like the whole team of unisols are like you know no longer you know under it's it's like universal soldier the return or something only good you know or not not terrible yeah, the movie's more than good. I'm just, I'm, I'm, uh, my point is that Universal Soldier: The Return is terrible, beyond terrible. But yeah, it's, it's, and I really liked how they actually again had Black Widow, you know seem to swap sides kind of thing. I, I really I know they can't do it every movie and it's not but just I really really like that they've now gotten to do the more dark stuff because in Iron Man 2 and the first Avenger I mean I love the character and I really like Scarlett Johansson's take on it but a big part of the character, the big part of what makes her interesting is that she's, you know, she, you don't know if you can keep trusting her. She she used to work for, you know, the Soviet Union, in which obviously Scarlett Johansson, you know, because she was like six when the wall fell. So, yeah, but, so I'm, I'm not saying that. I, I get that they, you know, I mean, if they had to have, and I mean, I guess they could go the alias route, but nevertheless, yeah, the 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 fact that yeah, I just I just really love it when they can actually do that with her. I I really love how like Spider-Man will, you know, say, oh, that's awesome, one second, and the next second he might get, like, punched, or he might, I mean, he almost knocked himself out at the end of the fight, and like, no, Mr. Stark, I'm okay, I'm, you know what, maybe I am done, <laughs> and I love, I, I was so hoping for it, because I was like, I wasn't in the motion, so, Ant-Man got to be huge, and, and he even said, you know, and, you know, oh, man, I thought, thought it was a water truck <laughs> you know and the you know so so there we have the first he just embiggens something you know which we we saw them we saw some of that in Ant-Man as well but then he's you know he starts saying okay I, I can do the you know okay it doesn't always work and this one time I kind of split myself in half in the lab but and it's like he's gonna do it. he's gonna do it and he goes I am so glad they didn't give that away I mean I'm almost 100% certain that there is not a single shot in any of the trailers or TV spots 
that actually shows Ant-Man huge. I am so glad they did. And they, you know, he, and he's grabbing people. And, and Spider-Man knocks him down with the Empire Strikes Back maneuver. And, and I love that before that, Ant-Man also goes in to, you know, Tony, you know, like, you, you know, Hawkeye's like, you ready? And he's like, up there on the tip, oh yeah, I'm ready, fire me, baby. And, you know, whoo, jumps into the armor and starts messing around, you know, the, yeah. I, I thought it was, you know, the, the thing with how Pepper and he apparently split up. Yeah, that I I was actually I had thought that she was gonna be in like some of the movie or something, but yeah, it that's that's really sad. I, that maybe helps add to why he's so quiet. But uh, yeah, let's see the other you know, and and the fact that Tony you know gets him out by you know treating it like there's a fire inside the suit because he he himself is not going to be harmed by the the suit being you know having this you know fire you know yeah stuff being shot through the suit you know but that's going to send ant-man out When the, the, I mean, you, you almost had to, you know, you almost knew that it was going to, when, when they, you know, when, I want to say King Chaka, Chaka, I'm, I'm not that well read black, in Black Panther, I'm afraid, but yeah, when he gets up and he's about to, to speak and the thing, I mean, it still took me by surprise, but yeah, I mean, of course it's, it's a prime target for. A, you know, an assassination. So, yeah, the you know, and the reveal how you know you had the them going through trucks, and then suddenly, oh no! And then he jumps, and just, yeah, and and that's also like I wasn't sure exactly how Black Panther was necessarily gonna fit in that much, and why exactly would he care that much? And then you know, it's like, my name is Chadwick Boseman. You killed my father, prepare to die. You know, it's, yeah. T okay, T'Challa, I believe, is his name, not Ch Chadwick, but yeah. That, yeah, and, and it's like, you know, when you first see, you know, just, you, you see him after the assassination and you see him in the suit, you know, those of us who already knew that that was, you know, yeah, that that, that was who it was going to be. Yeah, that's like okay. I got. I kind of get why he's risking his life. Why he's jumping onto cars and you know while he d destroyed the the you know. I love that shot. The slow mo when 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 Bucky gets the motorcycle and like gets on and just yeah. That's that's badass. But yeah, you know the the political summit kind of thing, you know, building blows up, it leads to something. It's not just there for, like, shock value and to completely throw away whatever there was with that plot. I will say that as, as gross as it is that, you know, Steve is now going to be dating a woman who who's so closely related to a woman that he almost dated yeah and and it's like you know the, he was frozen I, I get it I get that 
obviously can't still be with Peggy, but did it have to be someone related to, in any way? I, I get how the, the thing about, like, you know, this is why I didn't talk about it much, because she set a high standard for me to live up to. That's why I didn't talk. You know, so that's where Steve finds out about it as well. And he's not even bothered. He's, anyway, I get it. It's in the comics, and when they wrote the comics, they didn't think about how strange that is. Anyway... Maybe they watched the 4400, and th anyway, the 4400 really, when, when you stop to think about it, is full of, of stuff like that. It, you know, yeah. Anyway, I, I did think that was a, a decent enough reveal, and, you know, having the, the funeral also, you know, I mean, that... That is really the one thing that would make Steve, you know, leave the the political discussion. Which, again, I really like. I mean, they're they're actually they they have this kind of you know they're they're told the this is the situation and then they sit and talk they actually you know they they discuss it how is this going to end you have all the the different perspectives right there again just the the Russos, they get these characters they understand what defines them what sets them apart the the yeah just I really loved Crossbones in this. I mean, he was in very, very little of the film. You know, it's actually, you know, in, in the review, I note that, you know, the opening is similar to the, you know, the Amazing Spider-Man 2 opening and, you know, only much better. They, they, they handle it. They, they realize the, the, the situation there and in this they actually do kill off the you know the costumed villain in that opening and yeah I, I really think I mean that's it makes sense the you know crossbones you know yeah working on as this you know kind of mercenary and then you know and he utterly hates and I really like that they did you know we actually did get to see him unmasked you know that yeah he he didn't just walk away from that as I mean yeah it's yeah and yeah he's completely willing to blow himself just as long as he gets to Steve you know and the the and Wanda, I mean, she. What what could she do? You know, she tried to get him away from the people, but then, you know, he got so close to a building, and just yeah, it's, you know, it. And and I also just really liked Wanda and Vision together. The, you know. Like you know, he he walks in through the wall and says, "This we talked about this, you know." But the door was open, you know. I I I so wanted them to do a what I knocked joke, you know. Charmed. Yeah, the the yeah, just briefly for anyone who doesn't know that show. In the show. One of the three witch sisters dates this, you know, 
demon and the you know half demon and basically he he has a tendency to teleport into the house and at one point he does it and then they say you have you know please knock first you know and then the next time right before he teleports in you hear these strange knocking sounds and then he teleports in and then he's like I knocked and yeah anyway love me some Julian McMahon anyway yes the the you know the two of them together and you know he's he's trying a pinch a pinch you know and he tried oh, well, okay and the, you know oh it's, it's, you know I, I wanted to raise your spirits spirits raised I don't know what's in this but it's not paprika <laughs> that's yeah and and you know the and and then that thing of you know upward oh, I mean we could we could order a pizza what's going on I have to you know if people see you outside they might think that someone's going to blow up again you know he understands it because that's the way they you know he, he even says it earlier you know he he phrases it awkwardly but he he gets it you know it's nobody knows exactly how to be around him because he is just this completely new you know and they don't know anything else quite like it and he you know he wants to try to help Wanda with that as well you know and and the the little bits of characterization around you know I don't really know what this is and he indicates you know I just know that it was in Loki's staff and you know and yeah these these things about you know the, the more I know about it the less it controls me and she's talking about how you know she was someone before these powers but now that she has the powers it's difficult you know people see the powers and yeah just such such good dialogue and and also just I mean it's only we only see it briefly and they don't there's not a lot of but just seeing them in prison I mean Wanda looks devastated she just she looks so crushed by this and you know Hawkeye he's taunting you know don't don't turn your back on this one he'll break it you know and why didn't he say he'll stab you in it yeah anyway and and Ant-Man you know he's he's been there before he's just he's looking for a, a you know big black guy to punch or something and and I love that there's there's actually payoff because Hank Pym did say that. Hank Pym said, "Never tr you can't trust a Stark." You know he that's yeah that's what he you know no but it's a different Stark. No you can't trust. I'm not I'm not letting this my tech in the hands of a Stark. You know and you know and he says that and he just the you know he he he's really thinking oh this will this will get him this will really you know, jamming and break it off, you know. And Tony's like, who are you again? <laughs> yeah. Poor Lang, I want to say poor Scott Lang. He just, yeah, you know. He didn't, he wasn't even outside of jail for very long, was he? Really considering this. Well, never mind. And the, the the thing, oh, so you know, the first time we met, I'm I'm really so you know, oh yeah, the audition that's not gonna happen again. Just, the yeah, and and just yeah, you know, a few but really great moments. You know, I know there are a lot of other super people out there, so I just wanna thank you for thanking of me. <laughs> but yeah, I suppose that more or less covers it. I love the the respect between Captain America and Spider-Man, which again, beautiful, beautiful, because it's there in the comics. There's there's this kind of respect of of you know, because Spider-Man's a big fan, and there's this 
Cam, you know, and and for for Captain for for Steve to actually really look to Spider Man and see, wow, there's something there that means the world to Spider Man. You know, I I forget I forget the details of the story, but there was something where like the two of them met and like briefly fought side by side, and and Spider Man was like. I mean, he's Mr. Perfect. He doesn't have any problems. And he's like, do you ever have problems with all the time? And it's like, oh, thank you. I'm I'm not, you know, because Spider-Man's always like, oh, I'm the weird one. I'm the I'm the one that doesn't live up to, you know. But anyway, yeah, just that that little bit of, you know, where are you from? Brooklyn, Queens. Is it Steve from 12C? No, 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 no. He's he's from He's from Brooklyn, yeah, and and that again, you know, yeah, they they're both from New York, and they are both, you know, yeah, yeah, absolutely perfect. And I I really do like, I mean, with with Marisa Tomei as Aunt May, I mean, clearly the moment that they cast her, it was not going to be your typical Aunt May, but I mean from. We only saw a little here, but from what we saw, yeah, I can I can see it. She I, I buy her as a caring aunt. She you know, I haven't seen her in a ton of other things, but yeah, I I, I buy the the relationship and and the thing with like you know okay, don't tell Aunt May and and you know, Tony looking for the suit and like Oh, so this is new, and this other video isn't new either. And then you know he like grabs and the suit comes down. You know the whole yeah, and and the the thing with okay, leave that alone. You know webs his hand to the yeah, and just every little bit of action involving Spider-Man was just spot on, used so well. You know using the webbing you know, hand-to-hand -hand fighting, and swinging, and grabbing with the whip, just, yeah, absolutely spot on. I really, like, the, the whole scene at the airport was really phenomenal. If you like this review and want a more detailed one, the link is in the description box. I've reviewed other parts of this franchise, the links are in the description box. Please comment, thumbs up, and subscribe for more content.